Hey guys and welcome back to the channel. So today we're actually going to be putting in those coilovers finally. Yeah, the Max Speeding Rock coilovers have been really troublesome I would say. But today we're actually going to be putting them in. I'm going to try them out anyways. I mean I paid for them, I bought them, so I might as well uh, use them on the car and see how they go. So first things first is I'm going to be setting the preload on the suspension. So I read online Finally, Max Speeding Rod put some blog thing out saying that it is 10 millimeters of preload for most of their coilovers. So I'm gonna follow that. I'm just gonna preload them to 10 millimeters. You're probably wondering why I'm preloading them because when they were like arrived blown, uh, I had to replace them with the new cartridges. And in order to do that, you have to you know, undo all the preload and all that kind of stuff so that you can replace the cartridges. So the cartridges are new, at least three of them are. And then, uh, I mean, they still had oil on them. Um, and basically what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to adjust it to 10 millimeter preload. I'll show you guys how to do that. And then we're going to be putting it on the car and I'll show you guys how to adjust the height as well. All right, guys, so preload adjusting time. Okay. So I've already pulled off basically two of the, the shocks from the car. These are the two front ones because I was doing the transmission and you know, the force already off of it. So we're going to be using these as a template to adjust the height of this. So the first step to adjusting preload is that you need to basically release all the load on the springs. So um, they were originally released and then I, put, I set them to zero preload. I was going to put them in the car, but decided um, let's do some research first. So in order for you to adjust it to um, uh, the 10 millimeter preload, you'd want to measure out what 10, mil, uh, 10 millimeters is. So I think 10 millimeters is about two of these spanner wrenches. All right, so first things first is you want to loosen this collar, the bottom collar here, the locking collar. In order to do that, you basically turn it to the left. Once that's loosened, spin this all the way down so that you have some space. And you want to loosen um, this perch here. So once you loosen, you have to loosen it all the way till the spring is loose. So you can feel that here this is loose. So what you want to do is basically hand tighten this till the, the spring doesn't move anymore. There's it basically just like snug. All right. So there's no more movement here up and down and it's pretty snug. The spring doesn't move around or anything. So that is zero preload. Then you take the collar, spin it all the way up. Once it's spun all the way up and this isn't moving or anything, you don't feel any movement. You hand tighten it all the way already. It's pretty tight. Um, you take one of these lock rings and you start spinning this. I mean this, this um, spanner wrench and you start spinning this so that there is a gap between the top ring and the bottom ring here that fits your spanner wrench, at least two of them. So I'm going to do that. Right about there, two spanner wrenches worth. So that is a 10 millimeter preload. Now, spin this bottom collar all the way up and lock it in place. Preload set. Okay, next, you wanna take this whole thing off and measure the distance between this to the bottom here. And you'll adjust the same for this one. That way you know that they both adjusted the same for the preload. Also, before you guys start any of this, make sure you tighten this top um, nut. So with the preload set, we're kind of good to go with this. Um, but we want to basically get a general idea of how much lower we want. So basically, before you even take your stock suspension off, you basically measure your wheel well gap and determine how low you want to go. Um, I'm thinking I'm going to go about two inches, to, an inch and a half to two inches drop. So what you would do is just basically measure it out like this, spin this till it's about the same height. So if you look at this, it's basically parallel now. So from there, you measure up the distance between this bottom of the collar to the bottom of the sleeve. I'm getting about three inches there. Now, depending on how low you want to go, 
three inches, I'm going about an inch and a half. So you're gonna basically adjust it all the way up to an inch and a half to this collar. So what I'm gonna be doing is just spinning it all the way up until it hits an inch and a half for this collar. Yep, that's about an inch and a half. So that's basically the way you would hand tighten it, um, lock down like this with your hand, and then you slap it in the car. So don't tighten down these collars until you have your right, like the adjustment height correct to where you like it. Because you're gonna be basically raising the car and dropping it several times and taking the wheel off just to um, redo the, the height. All right, so to put this on the car, the, first, the, sim the simplest way is basically um, make sure that this is facing wherever you need to face it. Um, you can spin it while it's on the bottom anyways, but um, basically stick this into the thing and screw on the two top screws so that it's holding in place. Then you're going to want to put in the fork. So it's kind of like installing your stock ones but in reverse order. But with this being new and thick, it's a little difficult to get the fork on. So I'll show you guys a trick in a sec. So a lot of people say that they it comes with aluminum bolts. No, it doesn't. This is actually a steel bolt. Um, I mean, steel nut. How you would tell is put a magnet to it. Aluminum doesn't stick, but this is definitely steel. Just for curiosity sake, I'll show you guys that this is a steel bolt when people said this is aluminum and strips out easy. So there you go, steel. Aluminum is not magnetic. To install this fork, it's going to be a little bit difficult to stick in there. So what you would do is you get a screwdriver or a pry bar and you fit in the back here. Um, remove the bolt here so that it is completely out so that you have room to flex it. So as you're, you're basically installing it, you can flex it a little bit and get it in there. Another trick is to get a wrench. This is a 12 millimeter. You just jam it in there and it will widen it enough for you to pop it up. So I'm just going to do that right now. All right, guys, so with a, about an inch and a half drop, um, it leaves me about, I guess, an inch here. I think I'm okay with that. Um, the suspension still needs to settle. So right now it's adjusted to, I guess, this height for both sides. And um, what I'm gonna do is basically jack it up and just lock it in place. All right, guys, so the rear is in. One of the things you have to know is that this needs to be held on by a nut. So the perfect nut that fits on the back of here is actually your strut tire nut. Since these um, coilovers come with two nuts, the nuts that go on here for the stock um, shocks, they fit perfectly, the same thread pattern and everything, and they work as the backing nut. So you can actually reuse this. So you'll, you'll have a whole bunch of these spare ones after you put in these uh, coilover ones. All right, guys, so this is how it looks currently with it lowered. Um, it started to, I guess, um, settle a little bit. So this actually had a two finger gap. Now it's uh, about a finger. So I might raise this one back up a little bit later. I'm just going to let it sit for a while. Let it, I guess, um, you know, settle a little longer. But for now, um, it looks actually pretty good. But I think it's a little too low. It looks slammed to me front is okay it has a little bit of a two finger gap here but um, the rest I mean the rear is a little bit low you can already see the camber kind of going outwards um, yeah so what I did have to do is I had to adjust both sides so one side was always a little lower than the, the, the other so I had to adjust it a little bit on one side just so that it matches up. So how I did that was basically I measured the distance from the top here, I sit where the center of the rim is, to basically this to the wheel well, just to gauge how far I have to go. Um, and then I basically subtracted how many millimeters or whatever on the other side. Um, but that's basically the install guys. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, if you haven't already, please comment, like, and subscribe and share my videos. As always, guys, I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.